Hey there guys, welcome back and this week is I Can't Witch Without Angelica Root. So just a disclaimer at the start of the video as always, this series is more about the things I use regularly within my practice. So it's not to say that you can't be a witch without any of these items, that's not the idea of this at all. You don't need anything in theory. These are all tools. So I do want to keep saying that, it's not an absolute, you know, you must use this, you must use this, you must use that. But in the process of my path, these things have become pivotal and I use them regularly. And I thought I would share and discuss those things. So this week is a root. I do have the leaf as well, in shot, which is Angelica. So we're going to read the meanings from two herbal books as a point of reference to start with. So the first one is Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. Folk names, Archangel, Master Wart, Garden Angelica. Gender masculine, planet sun, element fire, deity Venus, powers, exorcism, protection, healing and visions. Magical uses, growing the plant is protective. I wish I could grow it. If I could grow things outside, outside of a pot, which I've just about managed to get lavender left alone in, Angelica would be one of the first things. Anyway, grown it is protective. Use in all protection and exorcism incenses. Sprinkle the four corners of the house with Angelica to ward off evil, or do this around the perimeter of the house. Added to the bath, Angelica removes curses, hexes and any spells that may have been cast against you. The root was carried in the pocket as a gambling talisman among some American Indian tribes. Angelica is also used in healing incenses and mixtures and smoking the leaves is said to cause visions. And then from Paul Burrell's A, Comp a Compendium sorry, of Herbal Magic, I really recommend this book it's really good, it, which has a lot more information per herb. So again, Sun Leo, counter magic herb, herb of consecration, herb of immortality, herb of protection, herb of purification, visionary herb, invocational, Atlantis, the Archangel May Michael. And it has law in this one, which I like. Grieve describes the remnants of an earlier pagan custom of Eastern Europe in which people carry the, carry the flowering stalks of Angelica into the village while chanting some ancient ditty in Lettish, so antiquated as to be unintelligible even to the singers themselves. As seen by its name, Angelica has been associated with the Archangel Michael. It comes into bloom near his feast day and has been connected to the Christian observance of the Annunciation. Angelica is known for its protection against evil spells. Mrs. Grieve says it has been called the root of the Holy Ghost. This majestic herb is thought by some to have been grown in the gardens of the mythical Atlantis. Usage. The Master Book of Herbalism considers Angelica one of the most valuable herbs of protection. The magical properties of Angelica work in two ways. One is through establishing protection, creating a barrier against energy which would be destructive or harmful to you. The other property is through filling the person with an abundance of good radiant energy. Angelica has a pleasing flavour and may be used internally. It is also an excellent bathing herb. The attributes of this relative of celery, which I didn't know before I read this book, obviously. I, I mean, I, I've had this book a long, long time. So I will have read that before, but I always forget it, that it's related to celery. <laughs> anyway, this relative of celery enhances one's aura, aids the person in maintaining a joyful outlook on life, and assists in allowing the internal psychic self to be open and functional. Angelica may be used in ritual baths, self-blessings, and in rituals of purification. For devotees of the Atlantean myth, Angelica may be integrated into meditations to help the practitioner have a sense of Atlantis, its law and knowledge. Plato was the first to write of this legend, and whether or not Atlantis ever existed in reality remains debated even today. The legends, however, have been believed by countless peoples over many centuries, and there is great power within the myth. Angelica may be used to intuit 
other realities with the ancient civilizations of other times. The belief in the protective and benevolent guardianship of Angelica is a strong force in many religions. For these people, Angelica is an essential herb. For any person desirous of better reaching one's inner light or finding inspiration and tapping into your highest ideals, Angelica will help you embrace and embody your own essence. As a bringer of light, Angelica may be used at Candlemas or in bulk as the days grow brighter and the hope is rekindled. Angelica may be used with the Strength card through med meditation. The strength card of Tarot, of course. That's a lot of information, isn't it, on, on a herb. I love this book. It's fantastic. I really highly recommend this book. A Compendium of Herbal Magic. There you go. So that's the second book. And I wanted to read those two and give a point of reference. I thought that the, uh, as much as I do enjoy the Cunningham book, it didn't give an awful lot of information and the Herbal Magic Compendium really does. So, oh, all that out of the way. Okay, so Angelica Root is one of my absolute favourites, if not my favourite herbal-like product I guess. I, I have separated these up a little bit into sort of flowers and, and leaves and roots and things because it, it makes it easier and I do enjoy several herbs or roots or things on a regular basis but Angelica is one that I always go back to and I, I really enjoy it. First and foremost it smells amazing and one of the ways of, of uh, getting to know herbs that you really enjoy and are drawn to and perhaps resonate with you a little bit more than others is perhaps through your senses and so the sense of smell becomes particularly important um, actually we'll grab some because for a little bit of a sort of closer look so on a sort of visual Roots are often not particularly attractive, you know, they're roots, that that's what they do, at least to me, and I, I, this is going to be odd because I'm an earth sign, so maybe I should appreciate roots more, but obviously they're not as pretty as flora, and not as pretty as some of the herbs even. Angelica root though is quite pleasing, it's got a very sort of light colour to it, and the smell is something else, and I really have to try and get hold of some incense sticks and see if they actually manage to capture Angelica in its scent. I've never tried it because I've always been a little bit wary of that it might not smell as good. So the scent of Angelica is one of the things that most draws me to it, and you can use it, of course, in your own herbal blends or incenses that you make. It's a good base, it's, it's earthy. I'm gonna sit here and smell like a little, I'm a little angelica taster, like wine tasted. So it's, it's woody, but it's a little bit warm, a little bit spicy, but not much. It's, it's woodland with a bit of spice maybe, and it, not overly so, but still beautiful. It's just one of my favourite scents. And if a herb or root or flower, you you know, the scent really attracts you, then it's likely that you will f easily form a connection with that herb flower plant because you are taking it into yourself and something in you is connecting to it through enjoyment and scent. And Angelica is definitely probably the first that really did that for me whilst working within magical properties, within working within magical practice. So seeing as this week we are talking about protection, I thought this would be ideal for Angelica. As I touched upon in the books, a lot of people consider it to be the essential protection herb. I believe the first time I ever bought Angelica it was because I'd been reading so much about it and I wanted to try it for that purpose and the scent was so 
astounding to me. I love it. So you can ingest it like the book says, you can bathe with it, you can include it in incenses and herbal blends, you can include it in herbal sachets, you can sprinkle it around the room, you can sprinkle it around the circle, you can sprinkle it around your altar, you can put it in the corners of your home or around the corners of your property and it is a really strong protective root or herb. I mean I, ha I have the leaves here. For some reason the leaves are more difficult to get hold of. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just that there's less of them, it's it's more expensive to get the leaf, I don't know. Um, I have to go to a store where my sister lives to get the angelica lift leaf for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why that is. <laughs> for me the angelica root has a strong crone association as well and I'm, this is entirely my own feelings on the subject because there is this connection with Archangel Michael for those people who work with angels but if you think about it, the, the, the other things that is supposedly masculine, sun and fire. Now, in terms of crone energy, that might not make a whole lot of sense. However, we can go down the fire route. Because if, because of it being a, a herb of fire, that means that it's good for purification. And burning it, therefore, is really in, intense for purification purposes because you are drawing on its fire purification properties by burning it so it's almost like giving fire to fire and getting rid of everything negative and it's wonderful magical energies just blitz through negativity like no tomorrow. Now the reason I think it feels very crone like to me is because for me a, lo a lot of crone work is about transformation if you think about you know being associated with death elements of dying and being reborn that is transformational and within terms of angelica root purifying it's the death of one thing for the transformation into something else and like we read in the compendium herbal magic it has a duality of nature that it not only protects but it fills the person with a joy a positivity and to me, whenever anything has that duality, that sort of feeds into this idea of crone energy because it protects and purifies and gets rid, but it also fills the person with magical energies of warmth and joy and light so that they may continue on in their path, continue on in their journey, not be affected by negativity, not allow those things to destroy them. So for me, it's always very good for working with any crone energies, be brilliant around Samhain for that sort of thing. If you were casting a, a circle at Samhain you might want to include some angelica root or if you were doing some protection work with angelica root that would be an ideal time. Now the other thing that that feeds into is the fact that it's often used in terms of psychic awareness and I know that Trina did a psychic oil using angelica and it's actually something I've done as well for a while, for a long time and that is creating your own angelica oil and that can be used on two grounds, you can use it as just a plain old protection oil which it would work fabulously for but also if you wanted to use it in terms of psychic work, psychic divination you could use it, the oil as, say, a wash. So if you were going to wash down your space um, that you were going to perform divination on, or you had a tray or a board or whatever you were going to use for divinational purposes, and you wanted to give it a cleanse down and, a, and maybe a wash with something protective, then angelica oil would be ideal because first and foremost you're protecting yourself. You might want to cleanse with something else first, maybe a Florida water. Um, and then you could wash down with some, rub down with some angelical oil. So you have a built up protection but you, in addition it's good for opening psychic awareness. So you are not only purifying and protecting yourself with the 
angelica oil and the properties of the angelica within it but you're also opening yourself up to psychic awareness you know you're filling yourself up with that positive energy and you are putting yourself in the right frame of mind to become more psychically aware as part of the process of divination and I think that's all I wanted to cover today for angelica I don't make my own teas. I don't trust myself. Plus, herbal teas and me are problematic. Um, even though I love the smell of Angelica, I don't know if I would like the taste. And I don't want to ruin Angelica for me. <laughs> I'm a really weird with herbal teas. I only like one or two. I've tried nearly every herbal tea under the sun. And my whole life I've only liked one or two. So I think that's going to be it for this video. And if any questions, pop them down below. Many blessings.